What's up guys, my name is Julian, your solar expert, and today I brought one of my contractors, uh, actually my longest partnership uh, out of all the contractors I work with. We've actually been working together since 2018. Uh, Chase and I, the owner of Alltech. In general, we've probably done, what, seven or 800 projects together if you oh, yeah. add, lot, add yeah. everything Many up. hundreds of projects. Yes, yeah, so we are going to give you the breakdown of this product right here, the Tesla Powerwall 3, the good, the bad, the ugly, and uh, basically our experience and opinion of actually how we feel about this after installing 42 of them. I wanted to just kind of bring Chase, who's the actual electrician contractor into this conversation so he can actually you know, share his opinion to everyone because most of the time you're just hearing the salesperson's opinion and we, we need to have more actual electricians explaining why they like to do certain things. And so with that being said, Well, I'm, I'm Chase. I'm the owner of Alltech Solar. Uh, I think maybe when we started working together, my beard looked more like yours. So it like <laughs> brings me back and I feel like I'm, yes. I'm so old now. Um, but yeah, we've, we've done, like you said, 42 of these now. There's been some ups and downs. Uh, I think it was a good like jump start to the industry. It was a good product that came out. I think maybe Tesla even knew they, they released it a little bit early before there were some of the hiccups made some that, that we'll talk about, yeah. um, you know, came up. But I mean, this right here, the, uh, the meter collar, the Tesla backup switch, I mean, that was, that was pretty revolutionary. It changed uh, the way we talk about backup power and, and how we install it. Uh, and, and still competitors are trying to catch up to, to what, what this is. So it's good economically. Um, installation wise, it's pretty, pretty easy. Um, you know, like with anything new, there's, there's things that we have to get, get used to. Um, but overall, you know, it's been a good product, but there's been failures. And when we get product failures, I get real like nervous because of what happened. What was that? Like, I don't know. That was like seven years ago or something when we were you know, in the midst of selling Solar Edge because Enphase had their issues. Solar Edge came out. We were like gung ho about Solar Edge, and now it's like all of our service is Solar Edge. And now I'm seeing, I'm seeing for the first time like a mix of Tesla into our service work, and I'm like, no, we can't have this again. Like I don't want these mass failures. Like 30, 40 percent of our of our installs are failing for for one reason or another. So. Um, so far, these first, these first 42, what we've got five bad power walls. Uh, we've got what a handful of these, uh, backup switches that have gone down. So it's, I don't know if it's like, we're getting unlucky cause I'm talking to other contractors and trying to get feedback and see like what's really happening in the market. And some haven't had the bad luck that we've had. So I'm like, I'm hopeful. And then I'm like, okay. Tesla went really fast. Now they're they're able to maybe catch up and, and fix some issues manufacturing wise, and maybe maybe we won't have these out of the box issues. Um, I don't know. What, do you know any customer feedback that, that we're hearing? Well, in general, I don't hear about like for example the Franklin battery that yeah. we also install doesn't use this product or you know this meter caller is still using a traditional you know gateway with the critical loads i haven't had any phone calls there whereas with the tesla product you know as obviously because you're the one that has to yeah. actually <laughs> deal with it um on a national basis i have had a couple in northern california okay. that have malfunctioned as well through you know another yeah so you know outside of california for whatever reason, you know, I, I don't have the, the numbers to really support, I think, a statistic that's reliable okay. because there's just, you know, most most places outside of California still have good net metering policies for the most part, even though one by one, the utilities are, you know, going away from that. Right. So they don't even need we're to still install an, batteries. Yeah. Know? Like we're yeah. still, I would say like Enphase is still the king for market share in, you know, NEM2 markets. But for California, I don't get phone, phone calls with other products. Yeah. That's um, true. I've done my best to avoid Solar Edge completely, you know, for the most yeah, part. Yeah, I mean it's kind of evaporated from our market. You know, I think they even know there's like, oh, San Diego market, it's it's not even worth it. Enphase dominated for so long. Right. And then 
uh, and then this product came out and you know like I said it jump started um, sales and, and installations with this and now we're slowly seeing you know other products creep in Franklin um, and phase they're, they're creeping back they're coming out with new products um, but yeah I would say overall with those other products with the traditional transfer panel and uh, critical loads panel like we're not seeing the issues like we're seeing with this you know it sucks to try and commission a project and everything's good and the meter collar is what's holding it up and it's a pain in the butt to to get these installed in the first place whether we're working with edison or uh, san diego gas and electric you know there it's it's not us that's installing them so we're, we're having to go through a third party to to get them installed and if it's bad then what do we do we're just like what does the what does the customer do you know and and what's going to happen later on when you know hundreds of thousands of these are installed and, and they go bad then because because one of them was up in Murrieta and customer didn't know that he was off grid essentially because the meter caller had malfunctioned so it took the system off grid and about eight o'clock he was gone like battery was drained no solar and experienced a blackout and he was like that's weird I have a battery but he had been off grid for you know six seven hours leading up to that point and so I get this frantic email late at night love those and then I'm addressing it first thing in the morning and you know I'm up in in Marietta at eight o'clock um, you know in the morning you know resolving the, the issue but it's like it shouldn't happen and what happens when it happens on a more frequent basis like are we gonna have these like emergency like I don't know for the longest time we would get you know service calls and like oh my solar is doing this or that and you know I like to say there's no there's no emergencies in solar because okay like your solar goes down or a panel goes down or whatever it it sucks but it's also not the end of the world right like, overall the investment's good um, but if you have something that completely takes you off grid and then you have no power like there there is in fact like now an emergency for solar and battery and it's like what are we going to do service wise for that kind of stuff yeah i mean when 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 the investment was more geared around you know you're going to have this thing pay for itself in five six seven years yeah. and you know if you have one month or two months you know out of that five-year period where you have right. some malfunctions and you've lost production it's not really affecting right. your investment yeah the investment's still there it's like okay you take that month you tack it on to the end and you still have your return the the, the, the feeling of investing yeah. you know 30 40 50 60 grand into a whole battery backup system and then when that time comes when you need it and then it doesn't yeah. work that's an awful feeling that that yeah. creates yeah. so um and, and in general when it comes to tesla still if you're if you were to call you know me today right and say i yeah. want to get quotes what's the best product i'm still going to tell you that especially if you're in you know a backup switch market that the powerwall 3 is by far still going to be your best value you're going to be able to achieve solar and battery backup for the least amount of money out of any product sure. you you can't even diy a battery with backup yourself for cheaper than what a professional can install the backup like it's that much of a better deal yeah. and so you know i'm still going to say that and i don't want to come across like we don't like we're our goal isn't to tell people that the powerwall 3 is super unreliable yeah but no, i think overall like yeah. we're still having very good success rates i think it's just maybe the product got released a little early um working out the bugs yeah and you know we're still yeah under 10 percent of these are being affected right yeah but it's just concerning it like just gives me that feeling again when solar edge was in the market mm. i'm like oh i don't want to have to deal with this right and then like now when i when i have to deal with it it's like a much bigger problem than just because oh, because down. the installer ends up being the one that the customers lean on to, yeah. to you know it's not we can literally be the ones that are processing a warranty claim for a customer yeah. and we can be getting the, the the runaround you know from tesla for example and then it's us that look bad i have a little uh little story for you i'm going to okay. surprise you with this um the last powerwall 3 that went bad uh, up in claremont uh so i was on tech support for five hours doing all the testing everything they they required right and the, the tech agent said, "Okay, now that we've done all this, we're gonna you know we're gonna issue an RMA, 
and you'll get an email from the RMA team. <clears throat> so next day, I had a battery on order for another project. And it started raining here, so I diverted that battery to that project to make us look better because I'm like, I just felt bad for them. I'm like, yeah. they just got their system and now it's already down. Yeah. So I'm gonna take this brand new one, send it up there, get it installed, get them up online. I'll, I'll delay that other project for a little bit. But then what happened, the following week, we had another rain day. So I got to catch up on some phone calls and emails. I called tech support again. And Tesla tells me, oh, I'm sorry, there was a duplicate ticket and it looks like we dropped the communication and uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to issue the RMA for that project. <laughs> I was like, wait, hold on a second. I just spent how much on a brand new unit and diverted it up there and now I'm out of pocket for that? No, 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 no. That's, so that's... they then said, okay, you have to you know, contact your account manager and, and you know, see what's going on. So I still don't have a resolution. Um, I'm confident that they're going to take care of it, but still like we've experienced that when we're calling tech support, it's kind of a hit or miss. Sometimes you get good agents. Sometimes you don't, um, the troubleshooting on them, like we're getting more and more used to troubleshooting them. Um, so we kind of have some, some knowledge to, to get ourselves started, um, and kind of work with the tech agents. But, um, you know, it's an ongoing process. There's a learning curve. And uh, same with the support agents, I think, you know. What, what, what is your opinion in the future, or sorry, in the present moment about Tesla customer service? Because everyone, like for example, a lot of people that have called me lately and they have Tesla cars. Yeah. And they've said, I've had a few issues with my car and Tesla has put me through the ringer tr with nonsense yeah. with my own trying to get my own car and they're they don't want to buy a powerwall 3 not because of the political stuff that's going on but because of their own experience with the tesla ev that is already in their garage yeah and so and i even made a video recently comparing tesla and the franklin a power 2 i'll put the link for the video somewhere and you know, I even said like I wanted to get a section where I get like a bunch of contractors together to share their opinion of like Franklin yeah. customer service versus Tesla customer service. So my quick take on it yeah. is it's still a good product. I mean, I think I think people should still purchase it, install it. I can see where customers have been put through the ringer. I, I too feel like some of the calls I'm being put through the ringer and it's like, you know, now that like we know some of the testing that they want to see, like we're we already have it done. We've got pictures. We've got the documentation okay. ready for them. Yeah. So we're not we're not wasting a bunch of time while we're on the phone. But still, sometimes we feel like we're either on hold for a while, or they're reviewing it for a while, or, or they just they don't seem to like really know what they're looking at, um, or what we're describing to them. Um, or we're kind of like going through the restart cycles a lot and it's like, hey, nothing's changing here. Like mm -hmm. how many times do we have to do this before we just call it quits? Yeah. Um, it'll improve. It's inevitable that it will it'll get better. So how do you feel about uh, you know, because Enphase is about to release their new battery product, the yeah. 10C, with their backup switch product. <laughs> Same with, with their backup switch. <laughs> that's same with Franklin, they're gonna come out with a uh, backup switch as well. Yep. So, yeah. How do you feel about uh, like Enphase's customer support or Franklin's customer support versus so Tesla's far, customer? So far with my experience, um, I'd say I've had mo the most experience on Enphase tech support um, just because we've installed their product many more times. We have like probably a couple thousand yeah, of those and out so there, like, yeah. Not to say that's a good thing that I've been on tech support so much, but like yeah. they've, they've definitely built up a, a strong rapport for tech support. So um, I've had I've had my situations with tech with you know Enphase tech support where it's been terrible mm -hmm. and I've been on for hours. Yeah. You know, um, but I think it's it's one off, um, and most of the time it's a minimal component issue with Enphase where the system's still up and running. It's just maybe one part of it's not. Right. Whereas you know this is like because it's a single point inverter, it, the whole thing's gone. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, Franklin, I think similar situation with Enphase, like, uh, they seem to be very quick to pick up, uh, very responsive. The tech engines know what they're talking about, um, and minimal calls, but we've also, they're newer to the market. So, uh, it's good to see that their tech support has been from the get go good. Um, but we haven't had to thankfully, um, call them too often. 
and it's just been uh, it's it's been a good experience. So if someone's in Southern California and they are in Edison or SDG and E territory, they can use the backup switch. What are some scenarios where you feel like someone would you know definitely want to use the power wall or like maybe definitely not? Do you, is there does anything come to mind in terms of? I personally think that if you have higher demand loads on your service panel. Uh, HVAC units, uh, pool, spa, EV charger that you really want to use, I don't think this is necessarily the product. Or you need to be pairing this with a smart control panel like this, the span panel. Um, yeah. I just feel like with the other systems, because we're specifically, if you're doing whole home backup, yes, we're bringing all the loads. Th this is a double-edged right? sword. It is, yeah. Right? But it, yeah. with the other systems, we can do partial home backup, so yeah. we can isolate the loads that you want backed up and dedicate the battery for that. And this is one reason why I do really like the new Franklin, because it has three smart load. If you install a span panel, even I believe with this, it's still more expensive than to do like a Franklin. I've in the past priced it out and it's more expensive to do a Powerwall 3, even with the bus using a span panel. Yeah, I mean, span's expensive. I mean, it's, it's an overall investment though. Now, we're, we're getting away from like the solar only model where it was a very easy investment. It was just like, all right, payback's five years. Yeah. Now this like, yeah, the payback may be a little longer, but now there's more functionality to it, more demand for like what the system's going to actually do and provide, whether that's like actually shifting, uh, you know, load shifting or uh, backup power. But it's not just, hey, I need to cover my bill. It's like, we need this to be like a, a smart, intelligent system, provide me backup power, it's gotta work. It's, it's much more than like just the basic investment tool that we were yeah. seeing in the past. So I think, you know, as a, a salesperson and consultant, you know, in this industry, basically helping people just all day figure out like which product they should choose for their home because, you know, people will call me and they'll say, what should I do? And, and it's, it's a good question to ask, right? Because you're really only going to make this decision, you know, unless you move in a few years and you're going to redo solar again on your new house. Like this is going to be the battery that's in their garage or on the side of your house for the next 15 plus years. And so yeah. you want to make sure that you're getting, you're getting the right one. So anyways, that's my perspective is yes, the Tesla is great, yeah. but if, if another product in theory pays for itself in, you know, eight years versus the Tesla, the Tesla seven, yeah. but it gives you this, 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 and this, yeah. I think it's something to look at. And I just, I, I just want to share that perspective. With yeah. People. I was, I was going to yeah. say the exact same thing. If it adds a year onto the return on investment, you may want to like strongly consider that. If you are in the Southern California area and you'd like to work with me and Alltech, we service all of Southern California. If you're watching this outside of Southern California, I service about 30 states, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Chase, obviously the owner of Alltech, Tesla certified, Franklin certified, Enphase certified, yeah. even Solar Edge certified. We don't want to admit it sometimes, but we are Solar Edge certified. And so, uh, are we cert any other cert Panasonic certified? Panasonic, uh, uh, Point Guard. We used to be SunPower certified before they unfortunately uh, left us. So, <laughs> so this guy's done it all. He's done hundreds yeah. of installations for me. And if you're in Southern California and you'd like us to do your solar and battery system, give us a call. All my information is in the description. Yeah. And looking forward to helping you out. Yeah, love to see you on site.